So here in southwestern Utah near the town of St. George is one of the more conspicuous geologic features in this area. Um, we kind of look, we're going to wheel around here kind of looking towards St. George and then across the freeway here, this is Interstate 15 and you can see the, the, the ridge across the interstate with the houses on top and the same exact feature exists over here where I'm standing. These are these ridges that run more or less north-south through this area. Uh, they tend to be really flat-topped uh, at, the, at, the, at their summits, and that's one reason why they have houses up top. It's easy, easy to develop, easy to build on top. Uh, there's one kind of out there in the distance. Uh, the, the old airport in St. George actually had, uh, was built on the same sort of feature. What these features are, and what's interesting about their geologic story, is they're actually an interesting case of um, what we call inverted topography. The topography is flipped from what it used to be. And the clue for figuring these out is looking at the rocks at the top of these ridges. So if you look at the top of this ridge, you'll see some blackish gray rock up there. It's the same as the rock across the freeway where the really nice houses are sitting. That's a rock called basalt. Basalt is lava. Lava that comes out of a volcano, cools and crystallizes, typically becomes basalt, depending on its chemistry. These basalts then came out of a volcanic vent to the north, flowed downhill through some little valley, through, through some small little uh, ancient channel downhill. That lava then cooled and crystallized to form the basalt. The basalt is really hard. It's much harder than these soft red sandstones and mudstones behind me. So over time, once that basalt uh, cap formed in that little valley, as more rain and uh, floods came down that area, it actually eroded the softer rocks on the sides of the basalt. And over time, those soft rocks uh, became lower topographically. The basalt, which was once at the bottom of the canyon, uh, over time became the top cap rock to the ridge that we see here. So what was once low, the canyon bottoms that filled in with basalt, eventually became the high point. And what was, event, what was once high, the sides of the canyon where the red mudstones and sandstones were, eventually became low. Uh, we can actually see some evidence for that. If we look up here just below the basalt, you can see a layer of really rounded rocks up there. Uh, those are volcanic rocks from the Pine Valley Mountains to the north. There's actually one down here at my feet. So you can see these kind of rounded uh, volcanic rocks that have eroded out of that channel. And the same situation would exist uh, across the way as well with the red sand sandstones and mudstones. This is the Kayenta Formation. It's a Jurassic aged uh, sedimentary unit. Then above that we have some of these rounded rocks that were in the channel, that were in the stream bed. And then of course the lava came down, filled in that channel to form the basalt cap rock on the little ridge right here. We allow a few thousands, maybe tens or hundreds of thousands of years of erosion to wear down the soft sandstones and mudstones of the Canta Formation and allow those resistant basalts to cap that ledge uh, and keep it from eroding and weathering as quickly to form these ridges then, these north-south running ridges that are quite ubiquitous and common here around St. George, Utah. So pretty cool story right here along Interstate 15. Uh, these ridges capped with basalt forming these inverted topography uh, types of stories.